All right, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being with us here on the 11th of March morning at NTV as we journey on into our Kickstarter this morning, focusing on preparations for the Dokolo by election and the reflecting on Uganda's electoral process. Backbone of it being that, according to the Electoral Commission, released program for the by election of the Dokolo woman MP, and uh, that is for Dokolo district and councillors and various local government councils in the, the various districts and also in that particular district where vacancies are existing currently. The nomination of candidates is going to be beginning today and it will be stretching all the way to tomorrow at the office of the district returning officer, Dokolo, and the successfully nominated candidates are going to be conducting their campaigning meetings for the next seven days starting on Wednesday the 13th all the way into the 19th of March 2024. Now with the first task of the Electoral Commission leadership in the new term, we are wanting to draw attention to the the existing electoral system and the process in the sceneries of the Dokolo woman MP by election. To talk to us about this process and the election in Uganda, by and large, we are going to be joined by Honorable Jimmy Akena, President of Uganda People's Congress, on Zoom. In studio with me, I do have the RCC Kasim Kamgisha uh, deputy in that capacity, and, and that is in Nakawa. And of course, we also do have a veteran politician, uh, Francis Babu, a senior citizen, giving us his two cents on the subject matter. I am Priscilla Regina Deloga. Welcome to our Kickstarter. I will allow my in-studio guests to give their greetings and salutations and then we'll move on to the one joining us via Zoom and we'll pick it up from there. I'll start with my immediate left and uh, may I say happy Ramadan to you. Hey, Ramadan Karim. Uh, thank you very much Priscilla. Good morning to you and the viewers. Uh, my Muslim colleagues and the whole country, I wish everyone Ramadan Karim, Ramadan Mubarak. Okay, all right. Honorable Francis? Yes, good morning. Uh, thank you for having us. And uh, I hope everybody had a good weekend. Uh, this, uh, this season seems to be for fasting. The Christians have been at it for some time. And now uh, Ramadan, uh, Holy Ramadan starts. These are important uh, seasons because here people reflect on what is going on. They pray to God to give them strength and to create peace. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's very good. But to me, what was important is I was looking at the East African newspaper and the, the, the former East African uh, community secretary general being removed for having been accused for corruption. And to me, that was an epic. Uh, for East Africa. Mm -hmm. I mean, corruption seems to be creeping everywhere. It has reached the, the East African community. Very unfortunate. Okay. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. All right. for another day. Equally on Zoom, we do have President Jibi Akena joining us as uh, the UPC and also in regards to the conversation we're going to be having of the Dokolo by-election. He still sets the paramount. Good morning to you, Mr. President. Sorry, I didn't get you very clearly. Good morning to you and your salutations to our audience this morning. Good morning, and it's great to be on NTV. Uh, thank you for hosting me. Uh, allow me also to send my um, warmest regards to those who are fasting, either for the period of Lent and Ramadan. Um, we are here ready for our political route ahead. Our candidate gets nominated this morning, so we're all set and ready to go. Okay, thank you so much. Now, speaking of set and ready to go, the NRM is set and ready to go for 2026 by how things are moving according to party uh, plan and agenda. An update to the register having closed last week off. And so we want to start from that analysis and find out why the early preparations for uh, presidential elections in the 2026 election coming through. I'll start with the deputy RCC to Nakawa and also an NRM subscriber to give us an update or an understanding on this particular exercise in line with the upcoming elections. Uh, it is very important for political parties in this year to align their forces because when you look at the remaining time, it's only 2024 that is remaining as a complete year without interruptions by political, by active political activities. So for the party in power 
which had issues with the registers in the last election, because the whole country is aware that Stuart is the primaries, the chairman of the party, and the president of, of Uganda, General Kaguta Seven, called off registers and guided that we participate by lining up. This was not out of the brew. It was because there were many complaints, there were many irregularities in his own view, and, and the party in general uh, in the register. So they were recalled. There was, because when they were being launched a few days ago at the Secretariat, the information was they had captured around uh, 17 million people. But after reviewing, after uh, cleaning up the, the, the registers, they are now closed around 10 million. But now these 10 million, where are they? Are they there? So the exercise to clean, re-register, and confirm the membership uh, began vigorously. Uh, for example, in my area, Nakawa, uh, yesterday, uh, the exercise was launched. And we expect today to carry out training of uh, village registrars, uh, sub-county registrars, who will now be going into uh, different stations in the, in the country at LOC level to ensure that from 13th to 17th, people come and, and cross-check themselves in the registers. Uh, in the past, you'd find someone has got uh, one name, someone you don't know that is a female or a male, no any numbers and, and no nothing. So the exercise is going to make, ensure that there is correspondence of my bio data and what is in the register to confirm that so and so is a member of the party. Now, 13th to 17th, they are almost four to five days. These days, in the view of the party, and from what we have picked, is that they could be enough. Mm -hmm. Because everybody resides in a village. Uh, everybody has got uh, uh, a place where they, they always vote from. So it becomes easier for someone to go and check himself or herself and confirm that what is in the register is his true biodata. What is the implication? The implication is, number one, if you are a member, if you are in the register, then you become a member of the party. But also, it gives you a leverage to participate in party activities, whether it is, for example, uh, uh, voting or being voted for. So if you're not part of the register, it becomes a bit difficult for you to be voted or to vote and participate in party activities. And so I think that is why the NRM is majorly uh, 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 building up towards, towards that process. And, and secondly, uh, the, the country is aware that, that since 2015, NRM has not had uh, uh, elections for the party structures. For example, myself, I'm a chairperson of NRM Youth League for Kabari District, but I'm no longer a youth. So it means my connection with my constituency of the young people is really not so deep because I have almost surpassed their age. Mm -hmm. So it is important for parties now to begin reconnecting with the, 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 the emerging populations so that they, they, they can align their forces for the coming election. Okay, all right. Uh, Captain Babu, in this regard, uh, isn't this too early a strategy for 2026? But also, in relation to the by-election conversation that we're going to get into, how does this help the party? Well, there's, there's several things here which uh, we must look at. First and foremost, this is housekeeping. Uh, the management of the party, uh, looking at uh, the problems they have within the party. I still feel that they are groping in the dark. That's my view. Mm -hmm. My view is that we are going to have a census of this country. As we talk right now, we have estimated numbers of Uganda. Some people are saying 47, others saying 48, others saying 46. So census would be extremely important. It would give us uh, the different demography that we require even for the parties to know. Now, party, of course, uh, managers, uh, what I call secretary generals and his uh, team, uh, have to make sure that the housekeeping is done and, 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 and they want to see what is it. Now, by going to what President Museven did last time, by saying that everybody should be uh, they should stop uh, following the register and uh, go. Is there a system of election? I think NRM has to stop uh, pretending mm -hmm. that they are, they are a nation. 
parties are not elected on national level. It's totally wrong, in my opinion. And therefore, the system we are using in NRM is totally wrong. That system opens to other parties uh, registering people in your party and making you fail. So the best thing they can do is to sit down and review their, their system. I don't agree with the system of NRM, mm -hmm. the, the way they are electing. They are not a nation. They don't even have the, the, the resources to do that uh, in their primaries. They can't afford it. So in my sincere opinion, one, that housekeeping should be reviewing, one, what went wrong in the last elections, two, they should think about the, the census which is coming. It's extremely important to tell us the numbers, the age. Uh, the, the, the artist was kind enough to tell us that some of us are now a little bit older than what we used to be. Unfortunately, in this country, everybody is a youth. They, they, nobody, no, nobody wants to be told they have left the age of mm -hmm. the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the younger party. We are the big party. We are the old. So they think the older people are over 70. Anybody below that is a youth. Unfortunately, no. So the census would help us to tell us what is going on, and that would be a good basis on, on housekeeping. Number two, I, I would like to appeal to the Secretary General of NRM that they should review their system of election. As long as they have that system, people are going to infiltrate the party during elections because this is competition. And therefore, a person who plays the game wins. And in this country, people do not have respect with the electoral laws. They do all sorts of things. Uh, people in this country are totally indisciplined during elections. And by the way, they should not say this party or that party. The whole political class mm -hmm. uh, needs to sit down and review. Because they keep talking about elections, electoral commission, independence of electoral commission. Let me tell you, I have seen a country not very far from here where they had an independent electoral commission. In fact, we were entertained on the appointments of that electoral commission on TV. Uh, I, enjo I enjoyed listening to the question and answers. At the end of the day, that electoral commission was, was vilified as being, uh, as being corrupt and did not, did not carry out a good election. So independence here is a, rel a relative term. Okay. What are we talking about? All right. So I'd, I'd like to sit down and say, well, the party is free to have housekeeping, but the party also should have housekeeping with a reasonable data, and that data can only be given to us by the census which is coming. All right, thank you so much, Captain Babu. Now this leaves the task to you, President Jimmy Akena, with the UPC to let us know uh, what his two thoughts are for the NRM and the process that it's undertaking with the register, but also how this translates into the UPC also reviewing their internal politics as well as their internal systems in preparation for you know the next uh, two and a half years as we get into election time. Um, thank you very much. Um, much as this is an NRM process, I am interested on two very important bases. First, I feel it is very important for our democracy to have viable and um, functional political parties. And therefore, it is important that um, all parties should be um, functional and viable. But at the same time, that the fact that um, NRM is in government until the next election then we need to pay more particular focus on exactly what's going on in NRM. Uh, one thing I can say without uh, fear of uh, contradiction is that these registers have been highly, highly inflated. And um, it would be better for NRM to get a real picture of where they stand and uh, what exactly is taking place um, on the ground. So um, at this stage, it's it's important. I mean, all parties were starting up preparations for the 2026. Uh, UPC, our um, process uh, started, and we're going to really use Docolo as a clear test case of some of the ideas which we've developed and see how they will actually turn out in, on, on the reality of politics. But it's really important that for political parties to have viable, functional, and clear political parties in Uganda, we have a process which is above board. Um, so, yes, much as we're focusing on this, so NRM, uh, in the past we've had situations where it is clearly the register is um, highly overblown. And um, I mean, for example, in the previous election, you had over 11 million crime preventers 
but the number of voters or those who voted for the NRM candidate do not come anywhere near that. So some of these figures, I believe, are put out for political reasons um, to sway an opinion. But for the future of Uganda and the future of democracy, let's have realistic, organized political parties, and we go and compete for, for the mandate to govern. And I agree with uh, Captain Babu that the census will give us an idea but that does not stop us doing the right thing and doing it properly for the benefit of our country. Report Kenna, how is the UPC preparing for the Dokolo Woman MP by election? Uh, starting off, of course, with the EC, you know, presentation of the candidates today. Um, we are being nominated at the 11 this morning. We have been running our register, um, and the registration continues at the branch level. We have not closed off. We have put in place some leadership at the village and at the parish level. And this is, from the experience which we had in Oya, um, a lot of things did take place, so we wanted to be very ready and prepared to deal with um, anything that comes up. And I can safely say that we are more prepared than we are in Oya to make sure that the will of the people of Dokolo will be um, respected. Um, they'll be free to vote and they'll be respected, the outcome will be respected. We're not going to accept any um, ideas of trying to manipulate the outcome or change anything that takes place. It's the people of Dokolo. Unfortunately, they lost their uh, member of parliament and therefore were this by election. So they, they do have the, the right and they must be freely allowed to pick um, the next candidate or the next uh, MP for this remaining session. And that is what we're going to ensure that it's going to happen. But the teams are very ready. Our registration continues. And um, it will give us an idea of how we're going to handle the journey to 2026. But I can safely say we're very prepared for this, this by-election and also the journey to 2026. We're well on the way. Well, thank you so much. Now, speaking of preparations, re returning to my guests in studio, as the Electoral Commission is having this preparation exercise kicking off today, we also do know that, of course, many parties are forwarding uh, candidates for representation on this uh, by-election. However, our elections, especially by-elections, most recently in this 11th Parliament and term, or sixth term, they've been marred a lot by violence. Uh, we saw an election whereby it was alleged that the NRM bought a bus of people from another part of uh, the country to come and participate in that by-election. Uh, we have seen midnight, uh, you know, uh, altercations between parties in a week of the election day and so many other incidences that have happened. So I'll uh, turn to you, Deputy RCC, as uh, you and people of your caliber of leadership, of course, representing uh, the president in making sure that these elections are free and fair and also uh, they take violence out of the picture. In this case, is it possible to have a by-election that is not mad by violence, it's not mad by people mastermining all sorts of things uh, to cause distraction and disruption to the exercise? Uh, a human being is born with an animalistic nature in him. But what makes someone civilized is the capacity to tame that animalistic character uh, in him or her. Now, for elections, it's a process whereby people's emotions are too high, and violence has not been seen in some of the elections in Uganda, but even outside, outside Uganda and East Africa, we have seen spates. But that does not qualify that there should be violence in elections. Well, accusations are always levied on NRM. I haven't done research to know why, but I think it's a tactic of creating a perception so that people can ride on and, and get sympathy vote. Violence can cut across. We have seen uh, uh, in areas where it is the, the opposition orchestrating violence. And we have seen areas where uh, uh, arrests are made and, and uh, you find it is not, it, 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 it is cross-cutting. You have got NRA members, you have got FDC members and other parties arrested. So violence is not a monopoly of only one single party. 
Uh, that notwithstanding, the security infrastructure of our country has got a mandate to ensure that our country is safe, our country is peaceful and stable at all times. And that does not uh, uh, stop when there is an election. So for, for the upcoming local election, the infrastructure of the state is ready to ensure that the whole electioneering and campaigning period is very peaceful so that everybody who comes out as a winner is not qualified to have won because of, of, of violence and, and maybe uh, 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 hooliganism orchestrated by the state. So our cardinal is to ensure that in that election there is uh, peace and security for all candidates and their campaign teams to deliver their, their victories. Uh, of course, you said some of my colleagues and those who work with share work together have been involved in these spates of violences. And I want, to, I want to say that there is no law which gives a mandate to anyone in this country to orchestrate violence in elections or even outside elections. So whoever participates or has been participating in such activity and seated in a government seat does it in his own capacity, not in the capacity of the seat such a person is holding. Uh, but also some people are overzealous. They, they, they want to prove points. But you see, you have to prove points within the confines of the law. What is the work of, for example, another seat in an election? My work cardinal is to coordinate security agencies in my area to ensure that there is security, there is peace, there is stability in such an occurrence of an election. But of course, some, some of our colleagues want to, to, to validate uh, some actions by their offices, and, 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 and they end up being overzealous and overstepping their mandate. And where, they, where, where you, you made a point that in some areas, buses were ferried, for example, in Oyam, but that, that did not guarantee a victory for the party. So uh, whether you, 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 you are violent or you are calm and you have not mobilized, in my view, it doesn't guarantee violence. My call would be that political parties put their efforts on the ground and sell their campaign manifesto. Because you are making a social contract with the Ugandans and you are promising, you are promising them to deliver at the end of your term of office. So concentrate on selling your manifesto so that people agree with you and vote you. I doubt whether violence can deliver victory. I doubt whether hooliganism can deliver victory. What delivers victory is the capacity of the party to convince uh, voters, but also organization. Sometimes you'll find that a party has produced more than four candidates. It has got a substantive flag bearer, and there are other who are independent leading to the party. Okay. That undermines that party in that area. So internal organization of the party uh, uh, in my view, is, is a success. And I want to give credit here. I'm following the Doko election, and I've seen UPC. I saw uh, uh, Akuro and Akui stepping down for the flag bearer of UPC. That's a credit. So whatever amount of violence you put on them, they are a step in terms of organization. So I think for us as the security infrastructure of Uganda, we shall stand by our mandate of ensuring that uh, 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 we protect and give security to every candidate in the election. And I doubt whether there is a law which gives security mandate to side with any party. Because the security of Uganda is non-partisan, constitutionally and by other laws of this country. Honorable Jimmy Akena, this is where I'd like to you to come in, because I know that uh, you've witnessed a sort of relatively peaceful by-election in which a UPC candidate won that, and you came out to outrightly speak uh, for that peace and security that was offered in that by-election and how things were conducted by the Electoral Commission, and of course the other players to ensure that there's peace and security in such a conducive environment. In this regards to the Dokolo woman MP by election, do you see the same happening or do you have some fears that somewhere, somehow, uh, there's going to be an emergency of violence, uh, kidnaps and things like that? Um, the, it, it's more than just violence and um, kidnaps. The, if you go back, back to the Oyam by election, for example, on the, um, for voting day, we are deployed um, teams to escort the ballot box from the stores to the polling stations. 
in the evening when the, the um, motorcycles are gone for that specific role, which is something which we're entitled to um, within the laws of Uganda, it was reported to police that those motorcycles or those who had come had come to do violence. And therefore, the police acted on a tip, which was, um, I would say, clearly from NRM, and impounded all the motorcycles. So in the morning, when we had the electoral commission stores as they're opening up and we're doing the verification, and the ballot boxes start going to the polling stations, we did not have um, all of what we needed to be um, to to follow up. And um, those sort of um, and where I disagree with the RCC is there is um, the state has the ability, greater ability to um, to violence and to other forms of manipulation. And that is what we do not want to, to be seen. Let us have a process which people vote freely, results come out, and we respect the results. Um, we we're very comfortable with that one, um, and that's what we're aiming for. And this time I'm putting on notice, I'm also going to be writing to the police and the um, electoral commission what safety measures we're putting in place. Now, I don't expect on the eve of election when the ballot boxes are going out that the teams which we have deployed to make sure that the ballot box leaves the electoral commission store arrives first at the sub county then at the polling station intact i don't expect those teams to be interfered with and the, the, those are the sort of things which happen then we had some of our teams which were monitoring who were accused of um, doing something else and the, the, the state apparatus pounced on them so th those are elements which put a tinge to an election which we don't need. Um, let everybody who wants to monitor, let them monitor the election because it's they have their interest. But where they get interfered with, and one, one of the issues which came up, they said, why did I bring motorcycles from Mira to Oya? But when you saw the whole team of electric commission, they had vehicles from all over Uganda. Almost every district, you could see them written on, and these are the vehicles which are carrying the ballot boxes. Police had also pulled resources from the whole region. Um, um, the, there were police trucks from all parts of, 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 I would say, northern Uganda in this by-election. But for UPC, motorcycles becomes a big issue. So the, the, those are things which we do not want to see in this election. We are going to do our level best to make it clear that we are not going to accept this level of manipulation. And um, the teams are better prepared than we were last time. And uh, so we hope that we'll be able to overcome this one. Okay. Um, the, another form of violence which occurred was our agents, the night before election, were attacked. Were attacked by goons who clearly will supported a particular candidate. So we started the election, especially one sub-county, without polling agents because they had been um, raided the night before. So I, I disagree that opposition are going to be violent. No, the, the, it's, that is just a, a statement used to justify. The, those who control the um, ability to exercise violence or to use force, it's not the opposition, it is the state. And the state agents should be neutral as far as elections are concerned. Let the political players deal with it. I know RCC is a bit conflicted in the sense that he's a, um, was a youth leader, although he has not been re-elected. But his role as RCC is to work for Nakawa, not for NRA Nakawa, but for the whole of Nakawa as far as the government program is concerned. We need to be able to separate each other from, from those positions and hold an election which is going to be greatly respected. Okay, speaking of greatly respected, maybe Captain Babu, with you being senior to all of us, uh, you can give us a trail of this build-up to UNSEF elections that we have seen over the course of time. Uh, kidnaps, he has talked about them. Uh, President Aken has uh, made reference to those. Uh, you talk about the polling agents uh, whose work is disrupted uh, during the course and towards the election day. Uh, we cannot forget about the campaign trails that are constantly interrupted by you know security uh, bodies, uh, especially if they're opposition related campaign trails. So all these are things that have cropped up over the course of time. It begs the question, one, what has permitted this kind of um, nature in terms of election processes? And then two, how can we overcome it, starting with the woman MP Dokolo by election? Thank you very much. 
Um, what, we, what are you discussing as symptoms of mismanagement? Symptoms that come with the zeal of competition. Uh, and I, I'd like to start right from the onset that we do not know how to, to operate in a multi-party system. We have failed. And we have failed because of our zeal. And we put the stakes of election to a such a level that in this country, the highest paid job in, is, is, is being a, a, a representative of one form or the other. A member of parliament is uh, very well looked after, and therefore it is do or die when, when you stand for elections. So when my brother was talking about opposition, I think we should talk about the whole political class. We, totally, we are totally indisciplined, and we are misusing the facilities given to us, and we are even uh, disturbing our security apparatuses because we, we make them do the wrong thing, we give them wrong information, like uh, uh, the president uh, of UPC has said. But let's start this way. Are we operating multi-parties the way they are supposed to be operated? That's number one. Number two, are we really serious that we would like to have good elections, or we are giving it lip service? In my sincere opinion, and this is so, Unless if the parties go back and improve the management of those parties, I'm not talking about one, because we, we are using this word opposition and listen, parties are vehicles that are supposed to give us a program as Uganda that if we get into leadership, we'll be able to do this work. Mm -hmm. The second very important issue is they get us good leaders. So a party has two major functions. One, to give us a good program. Two, to give us good leaders. So if those leaders you give us have got this indiscipline of fighting and causing violence, and it doesn't matter which party, then we are in for a mindset change. We should not talk about one particular party. We should talk about the whole political class. Are we really serious that we would like the multi-party dispensation to work or not to work? Now, these other excuses which are being given, one party, the other party, it is simple greed. And it, it, during competition, they bring out these traits. One, they bring out the trait of violence. Two, they bring out the trait of using money, commercial politics. Three, the, 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 the politics of blackmail and so on and so forth. Now this is because we do not understand that parties are vehicles that we should preserve so that the people of Uganda can say, well, that vehicle can do a better job than this one. We give them the chance to, 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 to elect. So we have really, um, uh, if you like, uh, disrespected the people of Uganda as political the political class. Mm -hmm. they, have not, they have not stood up to the expectation of the population. They are supposed, and I'm warning them, that the independents soon might take the, the, the order of the day. Because last time, 51% of the people who stood were independents. If the political parties do not change their attitude, the independents will stand, and if they've got good behavior, the people will elect them. So political parties might find themselves in a lot of trouble. One gentleman say, oh, no, no, no. Independent uh, cannot win because they have no organization. People will not elect them because they are organizing people. People are going to elect them because they are good mannered. People in political parties, some of them, do not have any manners. They have corruption. They are stealing votes. They are using all sorts of money. And you know who has done it, by the way? You know, you know what, what hurts me? Ugandans know who has done what. And, and they are here bragging that they are leaders. They are not. They are a shame to this country. And therefore, I won't take this opportunity since we're here this morning. One, the political parties have to go back inside their political parties to reorganize and give us a good picture of what a party is. 
Number two, some of their functions, some of their, their, their systems, which are not functional, like the one of NRM, they should review it. And then we should stop misusing our security. The security given wrong intelligence system or being ordered to do the wrong thing, that should stop. We don't have enough policemen to begin with. We only have 43 to 45,000 uh, for a population of 48 million, which means one policeman is looking after 1,000 people. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we've got to really be kind to our security organization that we do not misuse them. And those who are misusing them are totally wrong. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Captain Tabu, for your two cents in that regard. Returning to the UPC president, uh, Jimmy Akena, uh, in regards to this particular by-election, the twist in it is that you do have a whole new leadership with uh, the Electoral Commission, having been recently appointed and sworn in for a new term. So that begs a question to you as opposition or representing opposition in this discussion. What are your expectations from this newly elected Electoral Commission leadership? Um, many of the leaders are returning to their positions. Um, some of the new leaders I've known um, previously. And so um, f for me, as far as the election is concerned, it is first how we're going to get our votes into the ballot box and make sure that every vote which has been cast for a candidate is counted and recorded correctly. And um, when we handle that one, I do not expect um, interference at the level of the commission on um, um, affecting the results. So our key focus now is going to be on the campaign process, the preparation for voting and the counting, and making sure that is reflected. I hope that the electoral commission is going to stand up to um, providing um, a free and fair election, at least the, what happened in Oyam when we had that dispute and we were able to sort out initially, there was an idea that we continue voting and then we separate the votes after um, using the serial numbers. But then we felt it better that since the voters were very few who had voted and uh, a large number had been stopped, that let's start from scratch. And uh, when we started from scratch, we were able to at least take the polling station plus other polling stations. So I hope that we are going to be playing above board and um, these manipulations which take place are not going to occur because some of what took place took place in the presence of people who should actually be guarding against um, these malpractices. So we're, we're going to be very vigilant. We're going to be documenting um, what is taking place and we'll be able to um, present a picture of how the election took place. But I hope the new team is going to be able to handle this election um, it's going to be their first test, but I, I, I hope they'll be able to handle it well. Political atmosphere, political intermarriages, um, the UPC having an intermarriage arrangement with the NRM. What's the current arrangement that you do have with the, the ruling government? There is no arrangement on elections. We fill their own candidates, NRM fill their candidates. That, that, that does not occur. Um, what I mentioned earlier is that between now and 2026, there's a government, and that government is being led by the NRM. Uh, Post-2026, I'm not uh, somebody who can see um, clearly uh, or definitely in the future, but to see that there's going to be some changes as far as governance is concerned. So elections, um, in all cases of all elections, we have fielded our candidates who supported our candidates, and that's what I expect of every UPC member to support the UPC flag bearer. Um, th th there's no question and no compromise on that one. I'd also like to pick your two cents on the current wars of allegations that have mud our current ruling government uh, in Parliament in particular with the exhibition that has been ongoing. You know what's been happening. I want to find out from you what's the impact of such on you know the politic or the political leadership currently running and also how does it reshape 2026? I think this is something which we really need to reflect on seriously because uh, we can't run a country like that. Um, the resources which are being talked about across board, all sectors of, of government, where there's a question of corruption or misuse of funds, 
those funds are not the funds of government, those are the funds of the taxpayer, which is the citizens. Even the citizens who may not be paying direct taxes, pay indirect taxes whenever they spend any bit of money. Whatever you buy, you put some taxes in there. So this is the resources belonging to the citizens of Uganda. And it should actually be deployed to improve the livelihoods of the citizens of Uganda. If it's doing anything else, then, then there's a problem. And that is something which we must address in um, the run-up to 2026 and beyond 2026. The resources which we have in Uganda can make a difference in the lives of so many Ugandans, and we must be so. Um, we, we need to improve on services in many key areas so that we can improve livelihoods. And that, that is not something which we should actually be debating, that money which belongs to the people of Uganda should be used to help the people of Uganda, not um, to manipulate the politics, manipulate the processes, manipulate what, whatever it is. Let that money work for the people of Uganda, and all of us will be, will be happy for it. If we don't have the stresses, like maybe as a member of parliament, where certain things are being pushed to you, which is not your direct responsibility as a legislator, but if the government functions were working in that particular area, it will not fall on an MP to do so. So it's, it really is something which all of us as Ugandans must push that. Let the resources of Uganda work for the people of Uganda. Well, resources of Uganda in the Daily Monitor also bring it back in-house. Government officials allocated billions for donations. You do have 137 billion shillings allocated to the State House. You do have 9.7 billion Ugandan shillings allocated to the Parliament, the offices of the Speaker and Hard Deputy, 5 billion going out to the Premier's office, 720 million Ugandan shillings uh, donation kitty uh, for prisons and you know so on and so forth. Uh, what's the translation of this? in regards to one political leadership uh, and then the expenditure of <coughs> public funds uh, and uh, these, these allocations well they say that they are to help Ugandans but then what's the point of the budget seeing as we're in the budget process anyway uh, Sheikh uh, my, my, my first question would be are these allocations within the law or not uh, if, and, if, and if the allocations are within the law and, and, and therefore the question should be interrogating whether that law is relevant today and if not relevant, what should we do to have, to, to have, to have the law amended to deal with that? But if it is in, uh, outside the law, then the, 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 the debate becomes different. Making, first of all, the allocation is illegal. Number two, making a double expenditure on government, where you are giving government uh, offices money, but at the same time there is a budget. So, so, so to me, I think the, the, the question goes back to the, 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 the legal mandates of these offices given money, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and, and therefore interrogate whether that law is, uh, is, is still relevant today and work towards an amendment. But moving forward, uh, corruption has eaten up our country. And, and, and it has not eaten up only these offices indicated here, but it has eaten up the whole country across the spectrum. Okay, uh, given the fact that we have many more time, what would be the solutions to The this solution action? could be uh, a two-way one, uh, a reflection by every single of this country and, and lodge uh, a campaign towards uh, corruption by all means possible. Okay. Number two, interrogating the laws, because every law is there to chew an absurdity or a mischief. Now, when these laws were enacted, were they enacted when there was a mischief? Yes. Is there still a mischief? Yes or no. If the mischief has been done away with, then we stop these allocations. Okay. If it is still there, we continue. So we have to interrogate the law and reflect as a country. Captain, what is the solution to fighting corruption in ah, this Miss, um, Professor Peel Olumumba said that the word corruption is too nice to use. What is happening in Africa is looting at an industrial scale. There are people in this part of the world who have turned corruption into a very nasty thing and it's against the people. Now, I want to warn Ugandans and uh, those who are in the political class that people are not happy at all. They're very, very unhappy. And I want us to be very careful. Remember a man called Jerry Rawlings? He took the former heads of state put them on a and shot them. 
Ugandans have not reached that point yet, but Ugandans are very annoyed with corruption. Let them take heed that Ugandans are not happy at all, okay. that whatever games they are playing, manipulation, laws, you know, they, they talk, you know, you, you hear this politician, the rule of law, the rule of law. Where is the rule of law on corruption? All right, so let me have uh, <laughs> President the rule of law. for the UPC giving us a closure <laughs> on uh, this remark with the rule of law. Where is the rule of law? In closing. Uh, uh, sorry, I missed up that, but I, I want to give an, an example of where, where we fall in the overall um, scope of things. Um, the example I'm giving is what is taking place in Parliament. I can tell you that maybe 75-80% of members of Parliament have an ambulance. And um, those ambulances are working in the constituency at very minimal costs. But if you go and check at many of these health institutions, you may find a government ambulance which is on stones because it could not be maintained. So out of this circumstance, you're finding members of Parliament are trying to play a role which is not their actual role. And what we need to accept is that there is a major problem with the health system or the, 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 the ambulance services connected to the health system. So unless we address it at a national level, we are going to keep going in circles because somebody has to struggle to get uh, an ambulance and maintain that ambulance, which is not the role, not the role of member parliament. And this comes across in many areas. So we need to holistically tackle problems which we face. So clearly there's a health problem. There is a serious problem in education. You, we've been going through the results um, of, of recent, and th there's a big disparity between the urban and the rural setup, and there's also a huge disparity between different regions of the country. And this must be addressed because if we don't, we're going to not going to have this equitable development across the board. So I oh, think as <clears throat> well, what, what, what um, Captain Babu talks about the political class, we need to address the realistic problems we face as Ugandans, not to, to um, create illusions of what they are and uh, the, around that one. And the resources which are being lost, which could actually play a positive role in changing people's lives, is something which we need to get very serious about. Well, thank you so they much. There has to be a zero tolerance to corruption at the highest level and then it will trickle down. All right, thank you so much uh, for your submissions and that is uh, President for the UPC, Jimmy Akena, for having been a part of this dialogue as we realize, uh, you know, the power of political leadership into the country, especially in line of things like corruption and how it should be dealt with. At the end of the day, uh, the multi-partisan time that we are in should be a presentation and an opportunity for different parties to present good programs that can, you know, present alternatives to corruption. And also good leadership because at the end of the day we are all uh, the result of our leadership or the population is so if the leadership is corrupt what does that say about the population and I see heads shaking in studio here with me but we have to put to bed this conversation we'll pick it up yet another time after the by-elections uh, take underway next week uh, we take a short breather we return with uh, the revenue authority on the hot seat